Hello, um, welcome everybody to the September 24th, 2018 meeting of the New Market Budget Committee. Uh, let's start, as always, with the Pledge of Allegiance. one spectator tonight it's a bit of an unusual experience for us so thank you for coming um, I'll just remind everybody again on camera um, Patricia our recording secretary isn't able to be here tonight she's not feeling well so every anybody who's going to say something please say it clearly and into the microphone so that she'll be able to transcribe good minutes after this um, first item on the agenda is to go through the meeting, the minutes from our August 27th meeting. Um, do I have a motion on those minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the August 27th meeting minutes. Thank you, Mickey. A second? Second. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Does anybody see anything in the minutes that is at odds with your recollection or needs clarification? thought um, it's pretty short and sweet yep I didn't see anything that looked um, contrary to what I recall all right um, hearing no commentary um, all those in favor of approving the minutes of the September 24th or sorry August 27th meeting please say aye Aye. 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 Opposed? We are unanimous. One abstention, Ashley. Yes, correct. Moving along then. Um, new business. Um, we'd invited um, the town and the school district um, to <clears throat> join us tonight and just review the um, in year end results for the 2017 2018 fiscal year, which ended June the 30th. <clears throat> So um, I know Steve Fournier, the town administrator, was unable to join us, but he said Lisa um, Ambrosio, the business administrator, would be here to just walk us through the, um, the year-end results. So Lisa, please take it away. I just wanted to provide you with the MS-5. So I won't go line by line, but I want to point out um, in this report is total expenditures and total revenues. And if you turn to page uh, eight of this report, I'm sorry, I mean nine, <laughs> nine out of 10, it's just a high level summary. So revenues exceeded expenditures by 5,739. So to the extent uh, we estimated we were uh, pretty right on with where we thought we would be. And so fund equity improved by 5,739, meaning that is the fund balance that remains in the town. So per uh, ordinance, statute, charter, uh, we look to have at least 5% of the appropriations in fund balance. And so the town is in good position being at 2916201. So we ended the year um, in good shape, keeping our balance sheet the, on the prior page, the unassigned fund balance is at two, four, oh, I should say on page eight, if you look at the ending balance, the second column all the way at the bottom is where the fund equity line is. 
and what we look to have is have that be at least 5% of the total appropriation. So the town is in good shape there. Signed fund balance is actually the encumbrances, the year-end reserves for things that were outstanding at the end of the year, some payments that were still owed by the town. So the um, reserve for the town is in good shape. And we can look at different um, areas, but uh, I think you'll see that each each one of the functions came in in line. Um, one thing I did want to point out in the highway and street section is there were additional dollars provided for infrastructure. So if you look on page one, uh, actually. The, the first page, which is two of ten. If you look under highways and streets, you'll see that expenses, that was a significant um, increase over where we appropriated, but we received funding outside of the normal budget process for that. So those funds were accepted to expend for infrastructure per Senate Bill 38. So I just wanted to point out that as one of the areas Oh, that's right. So something um, that caught my eye when I was looking at this earlier is a, a lot of line items have a notation on them, agents on capital reserve. Right, so when we set our appropriations at some point, for example, if you look at page 4 of 10, um, long-term bonds and notes. So we budgeted 100000 for payment on a bond, but we spent 175 because we withdrew 75000 from a capital reserve. So there was a resolution to withdraw funds. So where we didn't exceed our appropriation, we spent more. That was actually for the TIF and the open space um, bond, for example. I think that's an easy one to look at. Um, but agents to expend on capital reserve, if you look right below there, the capital outlay, you can see machinery, vehicles, and equipment. I, I would have all resolutions backing up all those numbers, and that's why you don't see appropriation, but we actually spent we spent $750,000 out of our capital reserves. So appropriations, another way to describe that would be everything that comes out of general fund or comes out of current, current income? Yes, but th that seven fifty dollars were resolutions to come out of the capital reserves. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. think we're saying the same. Oh, okay. Thing, right? I hope we are. And when you look down below there, the operating transfers out, that's the four under function 4915. That's the money we're putting into the reserves. So those were voted appropriations. Definitely getting better at running tight budgets. I mean, that's, that's not even a... Right. One thousandth of a percent. At I know this point. it was it was um, close throughout the year. <laughs> it sort of, I mean, I guess the kind of striking thing to me is there. It looks, I mean, there were certain things that we, the council, decided from a high level to do this year, like the roads. Right. And then you set aside those those things like that it seems everything else was tracking right somewhere on. between one to five percent right. below mm -hmm. and it um, I mean active yeah, management we generally try not to budget more than we need but then you have to then it's very close so throughout the year I was monitoring along with um, Steve the town administrator looking at these expenses monthly we provide the council a report more detailed, which I can get to you as well. I just thought for this meeting I'd give a high level. Okay. 
So any of these we can break down into lower numbers if you want to see that detail. It's, it's a lot to take in. So when we present the budget template, you'll see all of these numbers will tie into each one of those functions. Okay. Yeah, no, that's helpful. I, helpful going forward, I guess it, we'll all have a little bit of a learning curve because, you know, it, I won't say it feels, and that's just, you know, the, the shell shock speaking, but it feels like every year prior we have a great new way that we're presenting that's different from the way we had well, last year. Well, I'm trying year. to add to the learning. Okay. Um, instead of bringing the, the detailed report and going through line, I thought a summary would be good. All right. Not that that isn't available. Questions? Observations? Comments? Formats always throw me. You kind of get used to seeing things in a certain way. So I think just you know, it's always I think it's always just helpful to have things. You know, the consistency helps knowledge transfer. Okay. Um, and uh, this is this is you know a great report. It's just it's new, so right. it feels a little foreign and you know not quite sure where to find the numbers. And what I can do is I'll email out the detailed report so you all have that for tomorrow. Perfect. So you can have the old yeah. I just. I hadn't presented the year-end financials before. Um, we've done it through the budget process and brought it in there. So you'll see these again when we go through the budget. Well, and this, that we appreciate because it gives us a chance to start wrapping our heads around it before we have to look at it. Yes, perhaps context. what area we want to focus in on more here. Mm -hmm. Other questions? I, and I'll kind of throw this out to Meredith as well. Would this be a good time to just quickly touch on the, the town's responses to the questions that we had circulated in advance of the meeting or? I think Steve shared the town's responses with mm -hmm. you, so I don't know that Lisa is in a position to add any more to that. All right. We were at the impression that um, Councilor um, um, Pike, Councilor Pike was I coming, thought was but going oh. to be here too. I don't see him, so I certainly can relay any questions, or we can relay any questions to Steve. Right. But right. I can speak to mine now or to the report now. It doesn't matter. I'm here. I guess first of all, we'll, I mean, just because we did ask the question and we did get a response to it, I just want to make sure it ends up as part of the record from the meeting because. Sure. You know, and not to take over your meeting, yeah. but perhaps we just do the financials first and then do that yeah. as a separate right. topic. Yeah. Yeah. If that's all right. I'm totally amenable to that okay. as well. All right. So I, the only questions I have on the town is, is it looks like obviously revenues came in stronger. To me, it looks like the biggest savings and expenditures is personnel. It looks like did we have some changes with retiree? Is that with the retirements and things like that? Yes. For the town? Yes. For the town. Yes. Change. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Change in staff. Because that seems to be the, the big item where the savings. Yeah. And also change in um, insurance, insurance elections okay. as well. Yep. And the thing about that is um, we have a project where we're also getting rebates on that. So we're going to see more savings in the future there. So I'm working on those final. Um, a major portion of it was a grant from the Community Deve Development, um, CDFA. I'm not sure what their Community Development Finance Authority, or I'm not sure what the... Uh, but it's always been an acronym to me. But we have a grant from that, and we also have rebates coming from Eversource on that. How long are those rebates expected to last? I don't know that answer. Fair <laughs> um, enough. I see the, well, the rebate is a one-time rebate. Yeah. But there's also savings on our, um, our, our bill right now. I see the credits coming in. Okay. So I'm just trying to figure out how much additional savings we have. So we have a 
rebate, one-time rebate, mm -hmm. and then we have some savings in our electric. Now, would those savings come from, I would say, maybe a pre-contracted rate with Eversource, or do you think that those are due to the fluctuations in energy prices this summer? No, I, I, I think it's low? actually the change in the lighting, okay. going to the LED lighting brought a savings. Fair enough. They and work well. I, actually, so. I know that. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else um, jump out of here? Actually, uh, I do have a couple, if you don't mind. Just uh, help out a newer guy, just understand. In areas like uh, sanitation, 4321, we see voted appropriations, 464, actual expenditures, 555. Um, also, where's the other one? Uh, fire, for example, 376, actual 423. Where do those large jumps come into play? Is that just daily as things arise. So some of uh, in the sanitation, and I can bring you more details on that, mm -hmm. but when we sell our, our, um, our bags or we do our recycling as well, so we have additional revenues sometimes offsetting it. So we don't see here, we can, we've expended more, but we brought in revenues as well to offset it. Okay. So I can get you a better um, view of that sanitation. Well, it, it's okay. That helps me understand. I just wasn't sure. And fire, um, if you, well, you may not recall. As we go into, as we started this year's budget, yep. we plan to have additional um, pay for volunteers and um, I don't know if it's actually overtime, but additional pay was built into this year. So we already started bringing more people on board. Okay. So it's... It's kind of something that transitioned into next year's budget as well, or this current year. Okay, thank you. So, yeah. Anything else on the town's year-end report? Anybody? Tight budget. Yeah. Our ambulance is part of our fire group, I believe. Is there a budget? Which, um, what's the function? Oh, yes. That, that is not um, the function that we budget that. We have a uh, combined fire rescue group, so it comes under the fire department. And good thing we didn't spend any because we didn't have any budget there. So. Fortunate. Knock on wood. <laughs> We, the way we, um, the way we do our revenues is just on our, our general fund revenues when we do that. And then the money that is collected comes in as just the tax revenue. It's just, it's just the way we budget for it. We don't um, budget those revenues and it doesn't, because you don't want to appropriate those funds because it's really you would double count it somehow. It, it's just an accounting thing. We don't put the we don't put the estimate in, but we take in the actual revenues to account for how much you raised in taxes. So the budget has to be without that money in it in order to calculate it. No, but that is that's that's the money we collect for taxes. So it's a portion of what we have to collect for the county, for the school, and the town. Not as part of the budget project. I never have. Um, it's for me mechanically. It's easier not to to figure out what the revenues have to be for the town alone, because these are the revenues for the town alone. But the tw the nineteen is made up of revenues for the school, the county, the whole, the whole bit. What the So the, what you're saying is the 19 million is the entire town property tax. Right, and where I, where I can show you that is <clears throat> is when you look at page four of ten, the town has to pay that money to the school. At the very bottom, you'll see 15 million dollars payments to other governments without a budget. 
because it's what the county voted for its for its um, budget with the school voted for its appropriations that the town has to pay the school I see. local so, and state so 15 million dollars of tax money has to go so the 19 eight. so the 19 is a portion of that collections plus it's it's a whole uh, um, bunch of things well it's not all just within the one year so net net you're getting the town is taken in about 4.3 million out of the 19 right eight. And, and some are advanced some are um, <clears throat> liens that we've had that we've cleared so it's it's a lot well, it's a lot more than just the straight 15 million and it's the town's own piece of the budget as well yes i guess a new form brings new questions so but I think as part of the budget process, uh, we can revisit the expenditures in detail when we go through the comparison of the prior year with the current year budget submission. And then I can also show you how it relates to this form. Other questions? Everybody seems quite engrossed. No, there's no big jump outs. It's just, I mean, it's <clears throat> like I said, we're within five grand of the. Yeah. Right. So it looks good. Right. Is anybody opposed to moving on to the school's report? Nope. Do you want to read in? We'll do that. I think we're going to wait and do, okay. right. do both of them at the same time. Expenses point. and then. Okay. Give you a break. So if you didn't like that form, you may not like this one either. But I think this is the same one we gave you last year is my recollection. Um, but if that is not your recollection, nope. we can bring you another one as well. Nope. Uh, if you look on um, the first page of yours, line 32, that number, which I can almost read, 365.075, is our retained fund balance. So that is the 2.5% okay. that voters voted several years ago to allow the school board to withhold at the end of the year. <coughs> we held back two and a half percent last year. We're able to do that again this year. And then if you look a couple lines further down at line 35, the unassi unassigned fund balance, the 389.3102, is the amount of money going back to taxpayers. taxpayers. And so that represents a little over 2% of our budget. $17.5 million budget would be about <coughs> 350000 so we're giving back just over um, that 2% threshold. So again, unlike the town, we don't have a policy that says we have to have a 5% fund balance. We're only allowed to hold back that 2.5%, which we've historically tried to do um, in case of emergency appropriations or things that should come up. But we're giving back to voters the remainder of that, which is about that 2%. So the right way to read this, I think, is net net fund balance went down by about 15,000 year over year. Okay. Please go on. Yeah, um, a, a good chunk of that is due to about $160,000 of additional revenue um, that we received in the last fiscal year. Some of that was the Kino Garden or the kindergarten aid um, that came from the state in a, the amount of about $80,000. Uh, additional um, to that, there was some retroactive state aid that came to us in the amount of about $17,000 based on, um, I'm just double checking that 17 is the number in my head. Oh, okay. Lisa's gonna verify that. My memory must not be working tonight. But uh, <laughs> between 11, it's either 11 or 17, um, of retroactive aid. So the state had made some errors in calculation and additional funds came back to a variety of towns. And for us, that represented about 11,000. We also saw uh, more uh, Medicaid aid than we had anticipated budgetarily. Uh, for us, much of the story is also some personnel changes. So every year we budget kind of with the people that we have now and the positions we anticipate. Um, 
for us, we saw some um, changes in personnel, so new hires or changes in benefit plans that represented some of that additional fund balance, as well as some changes in special education. We maybe had budgeted for a placement or for personnel that those needs changed as the year um, unfolded. So that's the sum of our parts, I think. Maybe completely missing, but if I'm looking for a comparison of where the year actually ended to what was budgeted, how did, where do I see that? Um, so you don't clearly on this sheet, which I guess is the same problem that you had with the town sheet. Um, again, that, that unassigned fund balance is the sum of all those line by line or category by category sections. But the, seat, the sheet that I think you're talking about is um, the summary sheet essentially that we present for budget has regular education, special education, transportation, mm -hmm. vocational, it has that whole list. Um, so we can share that with you. That's, that was the end of your report we provided to the board. And so we can share that, that with you as well. Again, right. my recollection was we had shared this one, but we can give you that summary sheet. And that you see in the budget as well, um, which is where you can most clearly see that. But uh, it was personnel um, largely between general ed because of salaries and benefits and special ed because of both some um, personnel and program differences. Mind if I uh, ask a question? Please go ahead. I'd like to circle back to a comment you made a short while ago regarding the Kino funding. Mm -hmm. Obviously not something you can uh, budget for and is a very new for the year. How beneficial did you find having that extra boost of funds to offset your costs? And do you think that it'll sure. be, a, I, I guess, helpful going forward in the future as we expect more towns to adopt the uh, Kino yeah, laws? Yeah, so I mean the, the true revenues to that are still somewhat unknown. Last okay. year um, the guarantee from the state was we would receive a set amount, mm -hmm. I want to say it was about $1,700 per um, full day kindergarten student, yep. which to us amounted to right around $80,000. Um, so we knew that as the year went along that we'd be receiving that aid. We don't know what that number will be in subsequent years. That's sort of the threshold yep. um, that they have guaranteed us in this in this year's budget. But uh, if there are additional revenues statewide, we could see more than that. Is that helpful? Absolutely. Any additional revenue um, funded at a state level is, is beneficial to us. Okay. Um, and, you know, certainly helps sustain the programs that we offer in the district. Cool. Thank you. Uh, I don't think it's separate. It would be part of the total state aid figure in the revenues. So I don't. Oh, sorry. But it's a zero. Yes, it does. So and my misspeaking is that in this year's budget then? The other state aid you're asking, the other state revenue as well, would be just part of you the total. There were sort of two things that helped push yep. the revenues, and one, one was the Kino aid, and the other was a either 11 or 17. Yep, which is just in that summary line 23, but it would be part of um, uh, all of that line 19. So some of that is our infrastructure money in the um, line 6. So I'll get a Split of what that is, but the, well, I should stand up. <laughs> yeah, please, just for the. Yep, I just realized that. So, so I'm starting. I don't to know that, that the keno actually is coming in this year, this fiscal year. So okay. this was the end of last year. So the other revenue from local so sources was a portion from um, state revenues from our infrastructure grants that we received a portion of for. Um, security upgrades. So Meredith, Meredith said that the last year was $80,000. For Kino. But that is, right years. now it is. Right now so it that's is. That's my mistake. That's in this fiscal year. Yeah. So this is correct. That was voted on so last it, March. Sorry. Wait, wait. I, I, July. Kino Garten sorry. was voted where's on. The, where's, the, where's the number that, that shows what we got from Kino? You're, it's where you said line 16 zero. is zero. But it's not this in is last correct. year. It's in the FY19. So I'm, I'm ahead of myself. Um, it's budgeted for now to come in this year. At what? At 80, I 80, 89,000, I think is the. We know that how. Because that's the, the 
floor that the state right? guaranteed us last year. Where, where do we see the this is actual, so it hasn't come in yet. So that would be that would be fiscal year 19's budget. It would be nine. It would be 1819. This is 1718. So, I, so I, I misspoke, Mickey. I was saying that that was in FY18. We got the number last fiscal year, that was, and it was passed by the legislature to allow state the communities to vote on that individually. The state guaranteed us that 89000 That is in the FY19 budget, so I apologize. Yeah, you see just the confusion between both reports. Mm -hmm. There's money, there's just sort of numbers that aren't there, that are there, there's, there's, there's He knows not there. That's just a yeah. error on my side. the other one, the, the it's, other is, is part of a bigger number, but not broken out, but it's important enough to mention. It's important enough to mention because we got it in, in June. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a five thousand dollars swing in what the actual number is. It's, it's just hard to kind of follow. Which is why I said at the outset that we would provide you with the detailed report. I'm happy to do that. I'm not trying to play any games. The numbers no, no, the number. No, no, no. I Very just didn't sure. recall. Yeah, sure. precisely. Yeah. Um, did I hear correctly that approximately it's $1,700 for That's my recollection. But I'm that's sorry. in, again, that's in the FY19 budget, and that's budgeted as such. So will that be the kindergartners that are entering this September? It's based on last year's numbers, which is part of, part of why I thought it was in there. How is that funding dispersed? Do you just get like a lump sum ch uh, check at the beginning of the year? Do you get quarterly payments from the state? State aid comes uh, at intervals. It's basically um, 10 financial drawdowns I think they come on out yeah it's based monthly. on the law so okay I'd have but to there's like a specific schedule for it where yes the, okay yeah yes. we get a payment schedule at the yep. beginning of the year so we can anticipate when those are coming and how that impacts payroll All right, so you know where you when and where you can apply those funds basically correct okay yeah thanks it's just built in really for us as part of the annual yeah flow but but the funds are yeah. revenues that offset the expenses, so mm -hmm. we still have to appropriate full expenses. No, that again. I was just curious to know how you're able to so account for incoming state aid that's kind of all based off of gambling. <laughs> well, we we monitor that. We watch. We have an estimate of what we believe it to be, and yep. hope to track the monthly reports against that revenue. Nice. So, yes. Which I will share. I'll send out tomorrow the detailed revenue report so you have the breakout of all the dollars yeah they, they just I guess so we're abundantly clear what yeah we yeah, just generally right. like to see a, ahead of budget season is you know by account budgeted spent budgeted spent budgeted spent because yeah. that and uh, yeah I, and in the past I have um, looked at a high level brought it to you and then when we're into the budget I've we do the detail but I right. give it to you at, at whatever no level it is, you know. No, it's no I want to be supportive, so what if, yeah, I'll yeah. get that we, out. We got to start calibrating our brains for this. Okay. <laughs> Let me say it a little differently. So these are the these are what, what you file with the state. Mm -hmm. and it lumps yeah. things together that right. you know make sense based on what the filer requirements are. But we will have seen those numbers broken out in a different form, you know, as far as the budgeting process the year before or whatever. So right. having them rolled up. I think I'm feeling the same pain as Mickey. Like, it's not necessarily that the format is different. It's trying to, on the fly, find which mm -hmm. ones we care about the breakdown. Because we don't need the breakdown for everything, I'm sure. Okay. But okay. for the ones that, like Mickey said, are important That's enough to mention, mm -hmm. you know, it, we're trying to do the mental math at, at the time. So if the su it's good to have a summary, because that way we don't get bogged down in the details. But maybe not the file summary, okay. if you want to roll up by function or whatever. I, think that uh, might be I have the details. <coughs> I'll provide them. No problem. Thanks. What, what he said very eloquently. Oh, I understand, <laughs> I understand better. I Thank you. perhaps should have had yeah. the discussion in advance of the meeting to know what yeah. to bring. Back. Yeah, please. Uh, to circle back around to the Kino um, funding, does the state require you to spend that on kindergarten? It, it's a, it's a revenue. It we have to demonstrate that we have full day kindergarten. That's part of our average daily membership and state reporting data. So we have to demonstrate that we have an approved kindergarten program, that we're meeting the standards, that we have students attending. They count how many kids we have attending for how many days, and our money comes per kindergarten child. Based so do off. you have to spend it specifically on the kindergarten? Because it's just market, part of our revenue. Well, it's in just, new market, the taxpayers already pay for the kindergarten. But it's already part. It's just part of our okay. revenue package. So sure. it's. And that's Not what I was trying to explain, yep. is you still have to appropriate what you're going to spend on kindergarten, show you have kindergarten, and then that's an offset to your overall tax rate. 
And so if you want to have a robust kindergarten, you're only going to get so much of Kino revenues to offset that. And, and those monies aren't enough to fund our kindergarten program anyway, just to be sure. clear. Oh, yeah. No, I, uh, I understand. That $89,000 funds one full-time teacher with salary and benefits and um, maybe a little bit of the classroom supplies, the material. So you don't have to have voted in Kino to get the revenues. That's correct. But yeah. I didn't know if the receiving the funds, you actually had to spend it on that grade level, if it, that was a specific no. statute. Our federal entitlement grants work project specifically, but our state aid in that form doesn't. It just doesn't offsets the tax rate overall. Sure. Thank you. Other questions? Last year, we came in about 2% as well. It seems about yep. within like 10,000 or so of last year, too. I, okay. I, yeah. Right. Okay. Which means, had we not had some of those additional revenues, would that's why I'm tighter. asking. Yeah, it would have because I remember last year we thought we were a little tight, and this feels without those revenues, it would have been even tighter. Okay. So we may be phrasing a slightly different phrasing of what Dave's asking. The fund balance that we brought into this fiscal year from the prior one. We had actually budgeted to spend that and end up, it's a zero base budget. We don't budget an ending fund balance, correct? Correct. All right. So correct. the 2% is, is purely savings relative to what was budget, budgeted because the 2 the 2.5% two per, two that we brought in from the prior year, we budgeted to spend it. We budgeted to spend a portion of it. We didn't budget to spend the full amount. You gave back, we gave back money to taxpayers last year. We mm -hmm. budgeted to sp carry forward a portion of our fund balance, but right. not the full amount. Okay. So is that 726 over, I think it's line 34, is that between what we pulled the last two years for fund balances, or is that something totally separate? I guess oh, what I'm asking is I know we pulled twenty six is something, something totally, totally separate. Okay, because we pulled three sixty five this year. We pulled yeah, about. Yeah, you want to look at column one. Column one, okay. Column uh, five is what we have in trust for capital reserves. Okay. And then we have the fund thirty, which is our capital project. So our investments right now. I'm working my way backwards. Column five, <laughs> column four, column three are our grants. Column two is our food service, and then column one is the general fund. Got it. So where, um, I can't obviously figure it out, transportation budget, where for the fiscal year did that end up relative to um, to expectations or to budget? Yeah, it's line 14 on page 3 mm -hmm. or page 4 of your report, but the third page in. Um, transportation vocational transportation is a separate line and but we, we were right on yep. with that because we contract that and so I know what that is going into the budget all right just for certain given the headaches we're having this year want to make sure we're not spending more than what we budgeted Yeah, I mean, you know, I guess I would say before we start the budget season in November, I would almost see, like to see the detail just to comparison so that I know what apples to apples are when we go into next season. Yeah, I mean, the, and, and we don't need to, yeah, we don't need, need to have that, it for a meeting, just like even if it's a two page yeah. sheet for us that goes by category. Yeah. And then when we get to budget, you get the yeah. line item detail, but the summary sheet, I think, yep. is what you're asking for. Yeah. Okay. Other questions on the school's year end report? 
look down to this end of the table. We've had more questions coming from that end so far. Any more questions from the loud end? <laughs> Not when it comes to the budget, I think um, All right. it's almost the same as last year. Anybody object to, to moving on to the, the last sort of budget-related topic, the, the school resource officer piece? Hearing none. Um, so, like I said, the, for just the knowledge of anybody who's going to watch this on TV <coughs> later, um, at the last meeting, um, we had a, a short discussion about the, the school resource officer transfer and kind of came up with some questions, um, mostly, I think, revolving around us just wanting to understand the mechanisms by which the money was transferred and the mechanisms by which it was calculated just to try to make it clear to everyone how that was done. Um, okay. no, we, we, prefer, I guess, not to get into budget season and, and find that there's a lot of misinformation or misunderstanding about the, the process between the, the schools and school district and the town and, and you know, we wanted to, to get that out there. So to that end, we sent, um, or I sent, um, based on my notes and recollection from the last meeting, two kind of long-winded multi-clause questions, um, one to the to the town administrator and, and one to Meredith, um, you know, to um, to try to just clarify that from our standpoint. Um, so we got responses, um, which I I've sent to, to Patricia, and I, and I hope she can work into the minutes. I don't know if I should read them. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to sketch the general process, and then if people have specific questions, we can either refer to Steve's responses, Kim's here on behalf of the school board to answer questions that you might have, and. Happy to kind of start there. Workable for everybody? All right, thank you. Please take it away. Sure. So last March, um, uh, following um, one of the, the school shootings, the school board um, met with the town police chief, as did the town council, um, in non public sessions just to talk about safety. Um, following that, um, the school board in public meeting asked for further information about adding a school resource officer. They held some public forums. They asked me to inquire of the town administrator about potential costs for that. The town administrator supplied those costs based on calculations from their salary sheet and what that would cost, salary and benefits for an officer. Um, that information was relayed back to the board. The board held its public forums. The board ultimately decided that yes, it wanted to add a school resource officer at the elementary school. Um, that information was then relayed back to the town administrator. The town administrator and the police chief sat down to talk about what that process might look like, which included being able to hire an officer um, and having that individual ready to start the school year. Um, the agreement essentially follows the agreement that we have for an existing school resource officer, which is paid for by the town, with the exception that because budgets were already set, um, in order to bring this individual forward, that um, the cost for that position would fall to the school department, and that was the understanding of the board going into that. Um, uh, the police department was able to hire an officer and have one assigned to us for the start of school, so we have not yet received the first bill for that. We'll be billed quarterly. Um, so no transfer has as yet taken place, but we will be billed and reimburse the town for those costs. Um, because it is, um, from the town's perspective, an um, unanticipated revenue, the town council held a, uh, put, out on, put out a notice and held a public hearing to discuss appropriating um, those funds, agreed that it would accept those funds as unanticipated fund balance and use them for the purpose of a school resource officer. Um, and so then, again, it will follow kind of that billing process. That's, a, that's the nutshell sketch, I guess. What would make our quarterly bill vary? Well, the first quarter, that officer didn't start with us until the end of August, so I would anticipate that we wouldn't see a charge for July. Um, you know, it's based on the time spent working in the school district, so I wouldn't expect much fluctuation after that. 
Just to clarify, though, when you say time spent working with the school district, the school district is still going to pay for the officer in the summertime as well. Well, we didn't correct? this past summer because there was no officer. All right, but going forward, well, or is that to be determined? Uh, that's to be determined because okay. the school board can only appropriate funds one year at a time. All right. And the council can only budget for revenues one year at a time. So, I, you know, that's yet to be determined. I think that's the general understanding of, of how folks would approach it. Um, but we haven't gotten to that point yet. All right. Other questions? When we start budget process, just like we do with every other position we budget for? Year over year. If it's a quarterly expenditure, and you can't estimate it until you get there, I don't understand how. I well, didn't say we say couldn't we estimate it. We can't, we can't get to the answer before we're there, but we have to set up a yearly budget for it. I don't, think don't, you're. I'm, just, I'm, I'm a little stymied that we don't know how we're going to pay for this officer in the summertime. That wasn't the question I was answering, Mickey, so I guess I can back up. We got an estimate sure. of about $94,000 for the cost of an officer salary and benefits for this fiscal year. No funds have been transferred because we've not yet been billed. I don't anticipate that we're gonna see a bill for July and all but maybe the last week of August because there was no officer in place because school was not in session and no officer had been assigned to work as an SRO. Um, so, I can't tell you exactly what those savings will be because I haven't tried to do that calculation, but we will pay out the majority of that $94,000, I would assume, over the course of this school year. The question I was answering was, had we budgeted for next year? Well, no, because we haven't set a budget for next year. So, but we do have a salary for that officer. For this year, and if the board decides that that position is carried forward into the next year's budget, we would have a salary for next year based on the police department's salary and benefits schedule. The if there are the budget through June 30th of next year. Sure, and then so how do we cover that person's salary in the summertime? Does that come out of the, is it the expectation that the town would pick up the months? When we do our budget schools? cycle coming up, we will, assuming that we want to retain that position, we would keep that in the budget. Do we assume we want to keep that position? Okay. I cannot speak for the entire board at this time, but that was sort of the indication when we started the process. Sure. And so we, so I, I mean, am I missing something? So we have a full year salary for a, uh, an employee that is split between both town and, and school. The school is gonna pay for that person's salary while they're in the school. But because school is not open in the summertime, those are not gonna come out of the school budget for that person's but salary. That, that was not, how the council relate it for this year but again for this year it wasn't budgeted so I think that's a question that will be revisited as we enter this year's budget process for the next fiscal year and is the answer to my to your question and the reality is it's well, the, the same answer, tax the, answer, well, the, the question I was asking was how, how are we going to know what we're going to pay how are we going to pay this person in the summertime if this salary comes out of the school budget right. but we're not paying for it in the summertime does this person not have a job for the month that the school is not in session? We may very well be paying for the person in the summertime. We just have not, since our budget is right now only through July 30th, what happens June 30th. on June 30th, we don't know what's happening on July 1 yet. So if, if in the next, before December when we do our budget again, we have an allocation for that line item for that SRO at the elementary school, that would, would start on July 1. And then we have a plan for how we represent that in the reports? It's, it's an expenditure. It'd be a contracted service, just like our facilities director is a contracted service. Right. And so for the, but for the months, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, for how many months would the school pay for this person? And then how many months would the school pay for this The agreement for this calendar year is the only one determined, and we were paying for the full salary for this year. But that, I am saying, because no one was in place for July and August, we're All not right. paying well, for well, July well, and well, August. You, you, everyone's talking past each other. May I take okay. a crack at this quickly? So, Mickey, they... What I'm hearing, and don't want to put words in anyone's mouth, is as part of this year's budget, the town and the school district are going to have to get together on how this is going to get paid for. Let's assume for the sake of argument, we're probably not going to want to lay this fellow off for the summer. They'll, that proposal will get embodied in the budgets. It'll go through the normal process. It'll go through us. It'll go through the deliberative session. And, you I'll know. I'll all that except, except for the assumption. Is it assumption this is going to happen, or we're heading into budget season, this is going to happen, right? Well, we'll, we'll know in a month or two, I, I assume, if that's, I mean, is that 
does that answer what you're? Yeah, as busy you guys okay. Well, let me ask. If you don't mind. How Please. is what is the process for the existing police force officer? Is it the same or different for this new one? The town 100% funds that position. So it will be different. Okay. Is there a significant reason why it has to be different? This year, the. No, I mean for the next budget season. I, I, again, I think that's a decision that the council and the board will need to make going into this year's budget. At this point, the agreement for this year was that the cost for that officer would fall to the school department because the town had not appropriated any funds for that and it was a request that came from the school after budget had uh, essentially been appropriated by voters, had been voted on. Okay, so my summary from, from my understanding is this year, hair on fire, we don't, we're just making it work and then next year, plan to be determined during the different process. Maybe the same as the existing resource officer, but we'll see. Correct. That's okay. a decision for the governing body. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Please. Um, I'd like to circle back around to how this position, SRO, is being funded. Um, I'm very displeased with the school board um, using allocated funds at a deliberative session um, and reallocating those funds at a deliberative session. I've always felt that the three boards or committees, however you want to say them, are elected officials in the town and we listen to what the town's people want. Um, people came into this meeting and into the delivery session in this room and allocated an extra money into the budget for the school. The school board decided to reuse it for good or bad, depending on what side of the fence you decide to sit on, but they used it for a different intent and, and it was specifically designed for a certain reason. With that, the $94,000 I don't think can be considered unanticipated funds on the town part, and I'm not sure if Lisa can uh, can, can talk about it. It is legally. I'm, I'm not sure how. In, in the, all the legal books that I see, it's either grant funds or gifts. If you're going to call it a gift to the town, well, there was a lot. I have uh, six or seven me uh, public meetings between both boards or committees talking about the use of this fund, so I don't know how it's unanticipated. Second question would be is how do you bill an unanticipated fund? If you're getting a revenue and it's unanticipated, how are you getting a quarterly bill for it? To me, and that's on the town side, that's not you. To me, that's just, um, lack of a better term, an oxymoron. Um, I agree with the position, I just disagree with the way it went about. I think it was in haste. There are tons of grants out there. Um, the chief of police has now come out and said in one of the meetings that he's thinking about adding a police officer already onto his team. Does that mean he would not be able to put him at the school, him or her, at the elementary school? We don't know. He, they currently pay for a resource officer at the, at the high school. Why not? It's the second largest building in the town that has the most population. So why not put another one there where he has uh, safety and concern? Another thing is you actually have a security budget. Why wasn't that thought of using um, as a part of the security measure? Because you actually have the ability, of, the availability of paying out of those accounts. I'm just really bothered more by the process of using funds that were allocated for a specific reason and voted on by the majority of this town and the board decided not to do it. I and I take that very seriously because I have to come and sit in front of all of these meetings and sometimes we have empty chairs and fortunately tonight we have five chairs that are full. And I take their responses and I take what you guys do very seriously and it, it, to me it just seemed like it was in haste. There could have been some more time, there was a school shooting, I understand it, we want safety for our kids, we all do, but there are also a process in which we could have gone through to, to proper allocate the funds for that and not misuse funds that were put in by the public. And I'll get off my soapbox. And I just wonder if, we, you know, if Lisa can't answer them, if Steve can answer the questions of unanticipated revenues, how are you billing unanticipated revenues? Um, they're supposed to come in during a budget cycle, uh, during a budget, um, not cycle, but during a budgeted year. So if you've talked about it before the year and had public meetings between the two organizations, how is it understood? You knew that was coming in. You know it's coming in. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Um, 
Would you like responses to? I can respond to some pieces of that. So unanticipated funds are those funds which are not appropriated as part of the operating budget. So in the part of the town council, those revenues from from the school, which the town council had to accept, um, were not included in the budget for the town. So that's that's how unanticipated funds are defined legislatively. Um, and so those funds, the town council held a public hearing to accept those unanticipated funds. That's the only way you can expend unanticipated <coughs> revenues is to hold a public hearing and for the governing body to authorize those funds to be spent, which is what happened. On the school side, for example, um, those unanticipated state funds, we can't spend. Those are going back, right? There's not a mechanism for that. Uh, in this case, the town council had that mechanism, followed that process. Um, in terms of the security budget, the infrastructure funds that we receive from the state are for specific projects. So they're infrastructure upgrades. Personnel is not allowed under that security budget. I know that's just a part of your question, but I wanted to at least clarify. Just want to publicly say that's all. Yeah, I just, yeah, yep. just wanted to clarify that piece. People asked. And Blue, sure. I just wanted to say from the school board side, this is not something that we took lightly on any level, any oh. part of this whole thing. I mean, it was an arduous task. Um, but when it came down to it, it was a question of we had these funds that even on the day of the deliberative, I said we're going to go back down to the bottom line and could be allocated a different way. After that happened, uh, it was determined that with the, the shooting and a, the request of several board members to increase safety the best way we knew how, and after meeting with Chief Drew, it was decided that an SRO was going to be the <coughs> option, and that's how we got here. Um, you know, do, do, did I want to have to make that decision? Absolutely not. Do I want, but my feeling as, as a voting member of the board was, we have a situation with additional revenue, a request from the public as well, asking for additional police coverage in the school. Um, I could not see my way to vote against it for fear that, God forbid, something would happen someday. Because um, I didn't know how I was going to answer to anyone for that, if that ever came to pass. So that's just how I feel about it. I do have one other question, Dan. Please. Underneath the RSA, it, it says um, any unanticipated funds um, coming into the town side of $10,000 or more, you have to have a public hearing. Does that mean it's going to be a quarterly public hearing to accept those funds? No, you can accept those on a one-time basis, which is well, what Well, how do you happened. know how much funds you're going to expect if you don't know what because the, the council, is. because the motion that the council had, or the yeah, well, I was trying to say it's not a motion. What's it called? Resolution. resolution thank you. Um, the resolution that the council had was to expend up to ninety-four thousand dollars towards the cost of a school resource officer, and that was the wording used at the public hearing. Okay. And that may partially answer, I think, your question earlier, Mickey. How do we know how much it was up to that amount, and will be billed accordingly? Yeah. There's but no transfer. Yeah, it's not a transfer. It, it's a it's an unanticipated revenue. We are contracting through the town for a service. The town has accepted those unanticipate that unanticipated revenue, and we're going to pay for that contracted expenditure out of our budget, which is the same kind of thing that would happen if we had uh, $250,000 cost that came up for us in special education. We would have to find money in our budget for that. The school board would be the authority to approve that expenditure. We would pay for that service out of <coughs> our budget. Other questions, comments? Jeff? I have one, maybe two. From the town's perspective, have we used this RSA to receive funds recently? Besides this one, obviously. I'm trying to think in my tenure. I, I Please um, get close to the microphone. Thank you. No, I'm trying to think in my tenure in the last couple of years what we've received is unanticipated. I, I can't say one way or the other. I just can't think. It's not. Okay, so I'd, I'd have to look. I, I, yeah. Steve so probably has more history. 
if it hasn't happened. But it's a common thing. Recently, okay. Well, this is where it I'm getting. It can be exactly. common. Is it I, common to have school districts transfer fun, unanticipated funds to towns? That's why. Like, are we are we the first? Is what I'm getting at. Um, unanticipated. I guess it's um, for a town. If you're just asking, it, it, perhaps a good problem to have. Meaning, if you have a number of these hearings, means you're you're receiving funds you didn't plan for. It's generally a good thing the town is receiving additional right, funding. In, I would imagine to in most cases. It's not always a donation. It's not always a grant, but it can be some other source of funding. It's unanticipated. You have to accept it to expend it. Do you have other examples of those, if it's not a grant and not a gift? It's an off-budget something. I personally calling? do not at this moment. What are we calling it? As unanticipated town? revenue. A gift? A grant? Unanticipated Just revenue. Just unanticipated revenue. Yep, other revenue. Somebody walked up and gave you $94,000. Yep. Unanticipated. But. And I'm not a lawyer, you but send a bill. RSA 3195B nope, says I, I, I accepting. agree, but we, we're sending a bill quarterly for $94,000 of unanticipated revenue that we anticipated. Well, yeah. I wouldn't even need, you guys, I wouldn't you have, really need to send a bill. You have public bill. meetings about having the revenue spent uh, uh, group-wise. So it's not like it's unanticipated where you filled out a form hoping that you're going to get money and then you, you uh, and then you won that money. It's not like that. It, it's, it's probably formality and it's probably just me being nitpicky and not happy with the way the process went. But it, it, to me, it's just not a, I don't anticipate revenue coming into my house unless all of a sudden uh, wow, I won the lottery. Right. Uh, other than that, I know what the income coming into the house is. Right, so. but understand that that new position would not have been filled on the town side had the town council not accepted those funds from the school district. That was and the mechanism by which the police chief went forward to hire so that he could make a school resource officer available um, based on those funds being... But counting on unanticipated revenues that were talked about before the budget cycle happened. No, they weren't. No, they were not in the budget. The, um, before the budgeting year, sorry, I constantly say that. Before, before the budgeting, the budgeting year, year, but the unanticipated is occurring before the, before the, uh, sorry, after the budget is appropriated. So after the vote occurs on whatever day that was, March, March 16th, March 14th, if funds come in after that date that aren't included in your budget, i.e. $94,000 from the school district, it's, it's unanticipated under the law which is what that mechanism is for, for public hearings and that process. I, I, I appreciate your frustration with the process and I, I, I think the board has heard that loud and clear. I know I've relayed it from prior conversation, um, but I, yeah, if, it, if the question is, was it within sort of the legal framework, that's the framework. Um, and you know the school district goes through a similar mechanism if we receive over five thousand dollars in a gift which is more often the case for us um, before that can be expended for that purpose there has to be a public hearing and the board has to then um, appropriate those funds so there are parallel though slightly different structures for both the town and the school and there were a lot of people at those public forums too um, just as there were at deliberative session who spoke um, you know, to the decision the board was making. It, is it a situation where if it wasn't for this RSA, it couldn't have happened? Or was it like there was an option for a special election or some other means? It's, yes. This was it. This is it. Unanticipated funds that come in. Once your budget is set, that's your budget. Unless you follow this RSA and the governing body goes through the process of holding a public hearing to accept those funds for, to expend for a specific purpose. Otherwise, they can't be expended. And you said that that's for the town and for the school. You, you said the school would have to send it back because there's no... There's not the true? same mechanism on the school side. We can accept gifts and we can accept state aid and grants, but yeah, there's not... It doesn't the, work the quite the same The thing is, way. You, it's a gross appropriation, so you have a bottom line total dollars that you cannot exceed. So the town couldn't have exceeded that bottom line dollars. As you all reviewed tight budget, there wasn't room to put another position in there, so they, where, how would they fund that? I'm, I'm just trying to make sure I understand the mechanism and how we got there, so that if I get questions, that sure. you know, I, 
I can at least yeah. kind of direct the question in the right way, you know, and, and make sense of it. I mean, so thank you for helping me understand. Yeah. I think I get it better now. Yeah. Um, I mean, we do go through a lot with the budget line by line, and, but we're really voting on a bottom line total, and it's the gross appropriations. So then, per law, there can be transfers between the different line items. So, um, so next year, we'll have to actually, go. both sides will have to properly, let's say, Correct. for the sake so of we argument, we come to the, to the same agreement, both sides will budget it. There won't be any unanticipated anything. That's right. That's right. And, uh, Which is, so the voters in this case, the voters themselves will actually determine that going forward in the next budget cycle. Whereas in this case, because it happened after the budget cycle, the elected body, the governing body, is authorized to make that determination under the RSA through a public hearing process. Any um, other questions or comments? So what do we call it? I'm sorry, I know I'm caught on the language here. It feels like we have a type of revenue, anticipated or not anticipated, and then we have a vehicle for that revenue, which would be a gift to Grant Stadium. And so I don't think we get to just stop at it's an unanticipated revenue. It, it feels like we have to define <coughs> what vehicle that unanticipated revenue is right. delivered by. Right. We, you already, uh, the town already accepts funds from the school department for the facilities director. The school accepts funds from the town for the business administrator, right? That's already in your budget. It's in there as an expenditure. They're a contracted service under facilities and under Office of the Superintendent or bus business services, I think, is our um, section. So those are already in there. The revenue from the town is, budget is budgeted under other, other aid. I, we can show so you that line specifically, but it would be budgeted the same way. So we would budget in the school department side an expenditure of whatever number of dollars to be determined for a school resource officer if that's what the board decides to move forward and then the town would budget for accordingly that same amount of money in revenues on their side to be put into offset expenses for the police department yeah it just feels there's you know it's different than sort of a special education uh, transportation which doesn't live outside of the school Special case where sure the expenditure lives outside of because but that person isn't in the schools the during the summer months, but we can't just let that person go. But our staff aren't in the schools during the summer and we pay for their health insurance year round. I mean, I, I appreciate the distinction, but I think that is not wholly true. We have other things that fall that way. Um, you know, where we are not necessarily deriving a direct benefit. Our teachers aren't in the buildings in the summer, but we still pay for their insurance year round. Their salaries are actually, they're not in the school for the most part in the summer either, but their salaries are year round. Sure. So in that sense, it's not different hey, for Dave. us. Dave? I think some of why we're, we're questioning a lot of this is for years, I mean, Blue and I have been here on the longest, the town and school were, couldn't have been farther apart and there was no working together on anything. So now that that's happening, we're trying to make sure we understand the mechanisms because it's a great thing that's happening finally because it's needed to happen for years. But now that it is, we're trying to understand the different ways because it never happened before. I mean, sure. I'm trying to paraphrase it as simple as I can, but I mean, we would try to get efficiency committees together for years to try to figure out how to work better together. And now that it is, well, know that we still have a very specific responsibility for accounting yep. under that, yep. and that's your interest, obviously, as yeah. well. So as we as we move forward with that, we will be able to show you very clearly in our expenditures this year, but also in our future budgets, where exactly any shared positions lie. And, and again, that is true now for our facilities director and our business administrator. Um, I guess the t between the two school resource officers, the current one is under the police department and also does details and patrols throughout the entire year, whether he does a patrol at night after we're working at the school or anything. Um, and I think this goes to what Mickey's talking about, that second school resource officer in the summertime is going to be out on patrols. Does that mean that this police officer falls under the new police contract that was just signed? Yes, so it's an employee. Of I think the that's where we're kind of trying to find the happy medium of a, the school is paying for a patrol officer during the summertime, even though 
let's use it as a reference as a teacher. If a teacher was teaching summer school, or if it, 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 I'm, it, we're trying to figure out where sure. the happy medium is going to be, yeah. and I mean, my personal feeling it was in haste, and we could and after Chief uh, uh, Chief True Chief True's remarks were about possibly adding a new re, uh, officer already. Um, so I think that's where the question is coming from, is during the summertime when this patrol officer, why is the school paying for a patrol officer um, and not somebody that's in the school? A and the I think that's where the question is coming sure. from. No different than if the facilities director is down here working on a town building, <coughs> uh, why is the school paying for that? You're paying a portion of that salary. So sure. how are we going to see that going forward when it's under the police contract of right. the town side, not under your health benefits or anything sure. like that? So. And I guess on the, says it's a weird place to be in. The other side of that coin is right now the town doesn't derive the benefits for nine months of the year for the existing school resource officer who is assigned to the school department Monday through Friday from seven to three. So uh, you know that that is in place. Again, the I, I think that's a decision for the governing bodies. Yes, is it true that the school resource officer, the newly hired school resource officer, is probably going to be working for the police department exclusively in the summer months. I would anticipate that to be the case. Um, at the same time, the nine months of the year, our other school resource officer has been working exclusively for the school department. So, uh, you know, there's there's going to be some give and take there. At the end of the day, it is the same you know, coming out of the same taxpayer pockets. So, you know, I think it's, it's really more about what makes the most sense to the governing bodies and to the budget committee and to, to the voters as a whole. Um, the cost doesn't change, right, to the community. The cost is gonna be the same. And so where those, those funds are appropriated, where those expenditures lie, again, assuming that these two positions stay in is a decision that it, Lisa and I aren't going to make. We're going to we're going to leave that to the with my previous well. comments. I, I don't want to get you uh, make it seem like I don't want a school resource officer at the elementary. I think it's a great idea, and it's not to have a gun in the school or anything like that. It's an actually to have. Uh, when we were going up, we had officer friendly. Uh, I, it was great. I knew the guy. Talked to him every day. That type of community awareness and getting a community back together again, um, and knowing that kids want to know they're safe as well. There's somebody here that can protect me. You know, so with my previous comments, I don't want you to think that I wasn't for it. it just the process of it happening is. Yeah. Uh, well, and I think one thing that's being missed is we're talking about the summertime and this, the budget year goes through June 30th, correct? Correct. So the summer months won't be decided until we start this budget process coming in November, December. That's why we don't have answers because we haven't even discussed next year's budget yet, correct? That's right. That okay. is absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, just my personal point of view is it, it you're right. It's the the taxpayers in general are paying for this, no matter whose budget it's part of. Um, I mean, my concern is just understanding that what we're spending on this isn't compromising something else that we think is important to spend money on, you know, within the schools. And um, you know, intelligent people can disagree, I suppose, about the impact that this has on 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 other things. But the good news is we're coming into the budget season where we can go through all of that and, and discuss all of that again, you know, for the upcoming year. Um, but, you know, whether the school pays for it or the town pays for it, I think there's general consensus it's a good thing to have that officer in place um, at the time that he's in place there. And, you know, a, as far as which pocket the three summer two and a half summer months are coming out of, it's somewhat irrelevant from the standpoint of a taxpayer because there's nobody in this town who just pays the town rate or just pays the school rate. So any other um, questions or comments? I, I, I do have one. I, I new to the board and so just appreciating the, I guess the passion that this discussion had in, uh, in the prior year um, and the there was a mechanism used to solve right what was available. Um, I guess if if it was uh, expensed of the same way in the next fiscal year, then my question back would be if there's a an SRO paid for by the town in one school and by the school another school, I'd really want to know what's the difference and why is that being 
single bond. I appreciate why it happened this year, but when the boards talk um, and look towards that solution for this year, it seemed to me that those two positions would be treated the same, right, if there's a true need in each school for that. So I guess that would be my question, appreciating how we got here in this interesting path that sounds like y'all took last year. Um, look forward to seeing how you do it this year. And just to add one more note on that, if you want to participate in the process of how that happens this year, you go to the school board meetings and you go to the town council meetings and participate there. By the time it gets to us, the decisions have been made and we're bottom line. point for anybody who ends up watching this on TV later is if, if it really does mean something to you, you, you got to get involved before the decision falls in our lap because that's just not something we can affect. We've got no line item authority over anything. It's gross bottom line number. Anything else on this topic before we move on? All right. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. I am going to suggest, even though we have the um, at the bottom of our agenda setting the calendar for the budget season, that we put that off, perhaps handle some of it over email over the next few weeks without having Steve here. I don't think we have really perfect clarity on what the timeline looks like toward the deliberative session. So unless somebody feels strongly to the contrary and would like to be here for another 15 minutes. Um, well, will it change our next meeting? Sorry. No, no I, our next meeting, uh, that is a good point. Let's, so I show our next meeting is October the 29th. Um, I don't think there's a, a need to get together in October. Other than that, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm kind of looking at Dave as shaking his head no i just october really is kind of because none of the budgets I, the town will have at least been in their sessions by then but nothing will be determined right so it's more just setting the rest of the the year up okay. so i don't see it being anything huge um i probably need to engage more and I'm, I'm sort of looking toward lisa i've heard nothing about cip so far like not seen a single email is that beginning very much underway. Very much underway. Yeah. I think you yeah. have a. Oh. Yeah. All right. <coughs> okay. Well, thank you. I, I, I guess somebody took me seriously when I said, "Leave me out of it." <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Um, and also, the budget is underway with the department heads to okay. have information, to Steve, uh, next week. And then I believe he's planning on presenting. Does he present first to the council? I believe um, mid October. Okay. So October fifteenth of that week, I, I believe he's presenting. Oh, um, wonderful! First, okay, that's great. First so draft. Everybody. So um, it's very much underway. Yeah, yeah, make a point, um, if you can, of watching those council meetings online. Get a jump on what the hot button issue is going to be this year. Yeah, and even to that point, I would say, you know, if you, if you don't make the meetings, at least try to follow up with them, because the, the next month will be all the good discussions with everything. Everything may not happen till November, but it's already going on, so pay attention now. All right, any other business anybody wants to um, bring up this fine evening? Seeing none, do I have a, a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Dave. Do I have a second? Thank you, Trevor. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We are unanimous. <laughs>